Hello everybody, oh, welcome back to my channel. I'm Dr. Neha Tanija. I am a public health specialist by profession and a mentor, a guide, an educator by passion. So uh, today I have, I have come up with yet another episode of PSM tip. Um, now over here today I'm going to discuss about interpretation of a forest plot and also a funnel plot. This is one of the questions that is asked in a lot of entrances these days. Ames had also asked it uh, uh, just last year maybe, all right. And so I am trying to make you, I will try to make you understand this concept with the help of an MCQ. Before we start, uh, here are certain links that I've provided to you. These are, these are my telegram group and channel links. You can join for all the recent updates and mcq practice on psm you can also subscribe to me or join my instagram account also you can listen to my lectures on unacademy by clicking on this on the my profile visit my profile also there are certain if you want to subscribe to uh, the batch courses that are run on unacademy be it uh, batch courses for neat pg 2021 or for neat for need pg 2022 or for any other batch course fmg batch course you can click on this link and subscribe to unacademy also uh, it's time to make psm learning interesting now so let us uh, look at the first mcq and try to understand about forest plot so look over here a study was done to assess the risk factors for breast cancer in 100 females from urban cities for which image is shown below how many studies reflect actual risk factors that may be ascertained correctly from the statistical analysis of the research is it two three four or five now the very first thing that you have to understand this is an image of a forest plot okay and a forest plot is an image which is used in which type of study design it is used in what is known as meta-analysis all right and why do we use a forest plot in meta-analysis to you know to present the overall effect size okay i'll tell you what all this is to present to graphically represent the overall effect size okay now look over here if you look at this figure there are a number of studies here smith et al 1991 john et al 1993 smith et al again 1999 ng et al 2004 and chu et al 2009 and over here you can see a number of uh, the odds ratio for these various studies that are given now suppose this study smith et al talks about risk factor one okay which could say be age Okay, John Sattal talks about risk factor 2, which could be, say, socioeconomic status. Smith et al. talks about risk factor 3, which could, say, uh, be about, say, diet or, say, nutrition habits. Okay, and for uh, this, uh, NG et al. talks about risk factor 4, which could be, be say, smoking. And Chu et al. talks about risk factor 5, which could be, say, alcohol. Now I have to find out, I have been asked the questions that how many studies out of this five studies, how many studies reflect actual risk factors which show a statistically significant association with breast cancer? Okay, that is my question. For that, what you have to see over here is the odds ratio. How are you going to interpret it? Look at the odds ratio, okay? For the first study, the odds ratio is 1.3 and the interval is 0 0.5 to 2.6. For the second, it is 2.1. Interval is 1 to 3.4, level lower limit and upper limit. For the third study, it is 1.8 and the interval is 0 0.9 to 3.2. Next, 2.3 with an interval of 1.9 to 2.7. And lastly, 2.1 with an interval of 1.8 to 2.5. And this is an overall summary measure which is given. Now, let me understand you. Let me make you understand uh, all of this meaning. All right. First, look at these individual studies. Okay. These horizontal lines are representing individual studies. They tell us whether 
these risk factors are significantly associated with breast cancer or not. So when we look at the study number one, Smith et al, for which we studied, say, age, all right? Over here, if you look at odds ratio, it is 1.3 with an interval of 0.5 to 2.6. Now, this odds ratio interval, does it include one or does it not include one? This definitely includes one. Abhi, just listen to this, what I'm saying. Okay, you'll know the interpretation. Study number two, the odds ratio is 2.1, interval is 1 to 3.4. So, does it include one or does it not include one? This also includes one. Okay, look at study number three. The interval is 0.9 of odds ratio, lower limit is 0.9 to 3.2. Does it include one or not? This also includes one. Look at study number four and five, where we are say, studying, say, smoking and alcohol. Do these include one in the lower or upper limit? No. Does not include one, okay? Neither study number four, neither study number five. So, they do not include one. Now, can anybody tell me why am I asking you whether it includes one or not? Because this will help us decide whether these risk factors are statistically significant or show an association with breast cancer or not. How? Let me tell you. Here again is the figure. When we say odds ratio, what does odds ratio represent? Strength of association. Okay, this represents strength of association. In which study design? This represents strength of association in a case control study design. All right. Now, what values can odds ratio take up? It could be more than one. It could be equal to one or it could be less than one. Is it okay? Now, when it is more than one, we say that the factor has a positive association. Okay? Like smoking and lung cancer. If it is more than one, smoking has a significant, has a positive association. If you smoke more, lung cancer will increase. Odds ratio is equal to one means no association. Okay? And odds ratio less than one means negative association. Or we also call it as a protective factor. Okay, we also call it as a protective factor. Now, over here, when I asked you, do these intervals include one or not? That is what we were trying to conclude, whether there is an association or not. Now, all these first three studies, they include one, isn't it? If you say 0.5 to 2.6, one is coming over here. Zero, 1 to 3.4 mein to 1 hai hi. 0. 0.9 to 3.2 1 is being included. That means whenever 1 is included, it simply means no association. Okay, so these first three studies that we see, Smith et al. 1991, John et al. 1993, and Smith et al. 1999, do not show any the, uh, statistical significant association with breast cancer. The risk factors that we studied, we studied, say, age, socioeconomic status, and nutrition. So age, socioeconomic status, and nutrition. They do not show any significant association with breast cancer. Therefore, look how they are represented. The horizontal lines are running very wide. The confidence interval is wide also. And these individual summary measures, which are represented by square signs, are away from the center. All right. But look at these two factors. If you see over here, this was say smoking and alcohol. In both of them, in both the interpretation for odds ratio, this does not include one, isn't it? Does not include one. That means these two studies, the risk factor that we are studying in these two studies show a statistical significant association with breast cancer. That is how you have to interpret it. Okay. If suppose here instead of odds ratio, we had relative risk. Again, it would be the same time. Look at the intervals, whether it includes one or not. If it includes one, that means no association. Okay. So, agar if I mark the answer to this, how many studies reflect actual risk factors that are showing a statistical significant association with breast cancer. It is how many studies? Only these two. So answer here was 
do. Now somebody can uh, go one step ahead and they can ask you what is the overall effect size, okay? So if I ask you from this question, what is the overall effect size? In a meta-analysis, ab kya karte ho? In a meta-analysis, you do analysis of analysis. That means, just let me give you an example. If you want to study depression among university students of India, okay? you want to provide a pooled estimate, a pooled value. So based on your inclusion criteria, last say 10 years, you take out all and you just take say cross-sectional study design. In last 10 years, the number of cross-sectional study designs that have been published, you include them in your study. So first part you do is a systematic review of those studies. Every study, suppose study number one, had included 100 medical students in one of the colleges in India where depression was 20%, okay? In study number two, it included 500 students where depression was 15%. Similarly, you take up to study number, say 10, last 10 years may up to 30 studies mili. So study up to 30. This also had some sample size, say 1000 stu students and this uh, depression was 20%. Now, what is the advantage of a systematic review or meta-analysis? You are including all these studies in your study design. So, number one, your sample size increases. In meta-analysis, you go one step further. You provide an analysis of analysis. That means all this analysis that was done in number one study, analysis in second study, similarly analysis up to 30 studies, you include them and you finally use a statistical software to provide a pooled estimate of depression, okay? That pooled estimate is represented by this summary measure or this diamond, okay? Over here, when we are studying, say, risk factors in breast cancer, just an example, we have included these five studies and the overall estimate, okay, the overall what is the association of these risk factors with breast cancer is given by this diamond. So if somebody goes one step further and asks you from this particular graph, comment on the overall effect size or pooled estimate, what are you going to write? This particular value. And is this significant or not? Is this pooled estimate size significant or not? It is definitely significant because this interval does not include 1. Am I clear? This is how you interpret a forest plot which is used to graphically represent overall effect size or pooled estimate in a meta-analysis. So you should know how to read these individual studies and also about overall summary measure. Now one last thing, if somebody gives you this image, what is this? This you only have to comment on. This is a funnel plot, which is used to do what? This comments on publication bias. That means whether the studies that you have included in your systematic review or meta-analysis, what is the quality of those studies, okay? So that is given by a public funnel plot, which represents publication bias. These dots represent individual studies. Publication bias hota hai, bohat bar only the studies with positive findings are included in uh, published literature. Okay, we forget to include or do not include the studies with negative finding. But please remember, studies with negative finding are also equally important. So whether the studies that you've included in your systematic review or meta-analysis are of good quality or not, whether they do not have any bias is represented by this funnel plot okay so this was a very short video where i have just tried to explain you how to interpret a forest plot and what is a funnel plot if you have any questions please uh, put in the comment section below also follow the links to find me on various platforms and uh, uh, you can also like comment and subscribe to my channel and like comment and subscribe to our academy thank you so much for watching i'll be back soon with another video thank you so much